There are 27,000 and counting cards that are legal to play with in Commander. With this many cards at our disposal, it's very easy for certain cards to fall through the cracks. But never fear, because that's why the Jank Center is here, to give you a roundup of 20 cards you should be checking out for your Commander decks. And the best part? All of these selections at the time of recording are under $1. As per usual, this video is brought to you by the EDH Jank Center, your source for everything Commander and everything Jank, and I'm your host, Jordan. Now let's dive in. Our first selection up today is Transmogrant's Crown. Two colorless mana artifact equipment from the Brothers War, it says. Equipped creature gets plus two plus O, oh, and whenever equipped creature dies, draw a card and the equip cost is two or one black mana. Yes, I am aware that this is a worse version of Skull Clamp, but here's my thing, I don't care. Maybe someone out there doesn't have multiple copies of Skull Clamp to throw in their decks. Maybe they actually care about the plus two plus O oh buff it gives a creature. This is a fun way to take this card because if you're doing a Voltron thing, you can actually benefit if someone decides to block and kill your scary thing. Or maybe someone out there is just tired of running the same old staples over and over again. This card can freshen up a budget black deck in no time. The card draw is really nice, the buff benefits us in certain game scenarios, and this pairs really well with Ashnod's altar, dude. Sack a creature that's equipped with this card, make two mana, use that mana to equip the crown to another creature, then repeat the process with something like Mayhem Devil, and you are off to the races. All right, next up we got Set's Tiger. Two white, white creature cat. This one is from Commander 2017. It has Flash, which means you may cast the spell anytime you could cast an instant. And when Set's Tiger enters, you gain protection from the color of your choice until end of turn, which means you can't be targeted, dealt damage, or enchanted by anything of the chosen color. This might be one of the most off the beaten path fog style effects I have ever come across. Fogs are usually in a non-permanent form and thus are great for instant speed shenanigans, which this little kitty cat actually ends up giving us as well with it having flash. Now, it isn't a proper fog in that it doesn't say prevent all combat damage, but I think it makes up for it in other ways. Protection from a certain color allows us to essentially fog a swarm of all red goblins, but it also prevents us from getting hit by a giant X spell or a target player mills half their library effect or a bevy of other scary circumstances. Additionally, playing this nets us both a protection ability as well as a creature on the field for the cost of one spell, which should never be underestimated. Oh, and if you're running cat stuff, then it's even better. All right, moving on to Escarpment Fortress. Four and a white creature wall from Assassin's Creed, it says. Defender, this creature can't attack. Reach, this creature can block creatures with flying. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus O, oh, and whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card and it's a three, five. <sighs> Remember the Assassin's Creed cards? Because I barely do, since they were sandwiched between 10,000 other product releases. But listen, that's okay, because that's what Scryfall is for. And I found this card whilst perusing and found it quite exhilarating. Five mana might be a high cost for certain builders out there, but for me, this is doing all kinds of cool stuff. We're getting a solid defender that can help us keep flyers at bay. We're getting a solid anthem effect that when paired with others starts to get pretty scary pretty fast. And we have consistent card draw throughout the game as long as we're attacking. There's nothing not to love here. And I think white token decks everywhere are going to love this thing, dude. All right, let's mosey on over to blood. Tracker, eh? Three and a black creature vampire wizard. This one's from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan commander decks. It has flying and pay one black and pay two life. Put a plus one plus one counter on Blood Tracker. When Blood Tracker leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each plus one plus one counter on it, and it's a two two. My goodness, does this thing slap. This is doing it all with an evasive keyword, an ability where it can get itself jacked, and a payoff for us if people target and kill it. They will, by the way. They will want to remove it because imagine this. On your opponent's end step, right before they pass it to you, you have five open mana. So you pay that mana and you pay 10 life, going to 30 to make Blood Tracker a 7-7. Seven, seven. Then on your turn, you give it lifelink and swing in for seven damage. Now you're at 37 life, only at a net loss of three life. And if you do this again next turn, you'll be at 27 life, then be able to swing for 12, putting you back up to 39. If you keep doing this, you'll eventually be in the green. And if your opponents snipe this 12-12, which again, they probably will end up doing, then you'll draw 10 cards. Nothing else on this list puts your opponents between a rock and a hard place like this. Go snag it. All right, next up on the list is Swarm of Bloodflies. Four and a black creature insect. This is from Cons of Tarkir. It has flying and 
The swarm of blood flies enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on swarm of blood flies and it starts out as a zero zero, but really it's a two two when it enters. Listen, it may not be a blood tracker, but we are all about inclusion at the Jank Center and I think this card and others in its genre still pull some weight. It is a fact of the game that creatures are going to die. There's no way around it. And with a lot of scarier things on board than a swarm of blood flies, opponents might let this thing sit around for a while. I love cards that can just passively accrue value like this. And it being innocuous helps this, since it might end up skirting past people with not enough removal or not so good threat assessment. Or folks that are caught between a rock and a hard place. Do I beast within this great henge or do I remove this eight cent uncommon from cons of Tarkir? Flying makes this thing so good and proliferating can also help you here. Also, I am vowing to eventually build an insect deck because I love that creature type, but I just haven't been happy with any of the insect commanders printed yet, but I digress. Let us move on to the next card, which is a cheeky little fellow named Whisperwood Elemental. Three green green creature elemental. This one is from the murders at Karlov Manor Precons. It says... At the beginning of your end step, manifest the top card of your library, which means you put it onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature, turn it face up anytime for its mana cost if it's a creature card. And you can sacrifice Whisperwood Elemental, and it says, until end of turn, face up non-token creatures you control gain. When this creature dies, manifest the top card of your library, and it's a 4-4. There has never been a better year to be a face down Magic the Gathering card than 2024, folks. Between MKM and Duskmore, we have received so much support for the face down face up strategy that a card like this is now being included in a slept on cards video and not my series finding homes for janky cards which i think is a pretty big deal we love to see it level up in these kinds of builds this card is just a straight up value piece netting you an extra manifest trigger on your end step which can eventually be parlayed into a bunch of extra triggers and value if you're running all the new aforementioned support for this strategy and if an opponent has had enough of your flipping shenanigans and tries to board wipe you can sack this and make sure you recover much faster than your adversaries Coming up next, we got Killmouth Dragon, five red, red creature dragon. This one is from the dual decks Knights vs. Dragons. It says, Amplify three. As this creature enters the battlefield, put three plus one plus one counters on it for each dragon card you reveal in your hand. It also has flying, and you can tap it. Kiln Mouth Dragon deals damage equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on it to target creature or player, and it's a five five. I'm not gonna lie to you folks, there are few things I love more in this game than just absolutely blasting someone in the face with a ton of damage. And there are a myriad number of ways to get this thing absolutely caked up with counters and just start dishing out heavy amounts of damage then once you start tapping and untapping this thing that's when we start going crazy dream scenario is being able to snipe the three other people at the table in one turn just with this card but hey until that day i'll take the incremental life loss too i'm not a picky man and then if you're running is it dragons is it for all the untapped shenanigans then that amplify ability comes in super clutch and i don't want to hear anything about how expensive it is okay cards cost mana in mtg i don't, I don't want to hear it all all right, moving on over to Orim's Thunder. Two and a white instant. This one is from Dominaria Remastered. It has a kicker cost for one red. You may pay an additional red as you cast this spell. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If this spell was kicked, it deals damage equal to that permanence mana value to target creature. So this is a fun little Boros removal spell that I think deserves a bit more attention solely for the fact that not only does it do what we ask of it, which is remove an artifact or enchantment, but for a little extra payment, we can deal a little something something to something else. In this case, a creature, which if you didn't follow from the last selection is something I love to do. Normally this will be dishing out two to five damage to something, which is plenty enough to kill many a problematic creature in this format. But then when we hit something like the Great Henge or a Scion of Draco or any other high cost artifact or enchantment, we can start targeting some beefier creatures. All for four mana, is a pretty sweet deal to me. 
All right, enough of that. We're moving on to Audric, Master Tactician. Two white, white, legendary creature human soldier. This copy is from Commander Masters. It says, First Strike, which means this creature deals combat damage before creatures without First Strike. And whenever Audric, Master Tactician, and at least three other creatures attack, you choose which creatures block this combat and how those creatures block. And it's a 3-4. I feel like this is the lesser known of the two mono-white Audrics, but I wanted to give it some love since its counterpart has an entire deck tech already dedicated to it on the channel. Maybe this is just me, which is likely since I can be a bit short-sighted sometimes. I am known to be a silly boy, but I honestly always forget that I can throw legendary creatures into a build and not have them as a commander. Like, this would go so well in a Marisi deck where our opponents can't cast spells during combat. It's like the ultimate combat lock. So I've been including a lot more legends in the 99s of my builds as of late, and it's been awesome and quite liberating. Also, I just love combat tricky cards like this. So often attacking can feel a bit stressful or burdensome because you don't know exactly how your opponents are going to react. But Audric sweeps all that anxiety away, baby, by allowing us to manipulate our opponent's blockers. This leaves room for all kinds of shenanigans, which I won't explicitly get into, but let me know if you'd be interested in a full deck tech on this guy. Mono White combat tricks could be a lot of fun. Okay, next up we got Cunning Rhetoric. Two and a black enchantment. This one is from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction precons. It says... Whenever an opponent attacks you and or one or more planeswalkers you control, exile the top card of that player's library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. This card is below a dollar, which if you've been watching my videos recently, you would know from my price drops video. But if you haven't checked that out, never fear because we're going to talk about it here. This is a classic pillow fort enchantment that first reared its head during the Strixhaven days. I fell in love with it then because it wasn't just your run of the mill, pay more mana to attack me effect. It was, if you attack me, I'll get to steal something from the top of your deck and use it against you, which I thought was just so cool. And I still think it's cool. And now that price isn't stopping me, I'll be throwing it into every deck that splashes black that I feel needs to have some form of pillow fording. All right, here we go. Moving on to Zathrid Gorgon. Five and a black creature Gorgon. This is from Magic 2013. It says, Death Touch, which means any amount of damage this deals to a creature is enough to destroy it. And you could pay two and a black and tap it. Put a petrification counter on target creature. It gains defender and becomes a colorless artifact in addition to its other types. Its activated abilities can't be activated. A creature with defender can't attack. And the creature's a 3-6. Gorgons don't get talked about a lot since they're a niche creature type, but this one stands out from the pack with a super dope, repeatable, frogify-esque effect that ices opposing creatures. I have always said that I'm a fan of these kinds of removal rather than a beast within situation, just because putting that creature or permanent in the graveyard opens it up to being recurred later, while icing it on the field keeps it right where it is, preventing it from being recurred later. Our opponent has to then take extra steps to get it back to its original form, which is great for us. Also, amazing flavor here, as the Gorgon literally turns opposing creatures into statues. All right, another selection coming up. We got Echoing Courage, one in the green instant. This one's from Masters 25. It says, target creature and all other creatures with the same name as that creature get plus two, plus two until end of turn. This is probably the most niche card on the list, but I think it still warrants an include as its wording allows for us to target tokens, folks. For two mana, this is a decent buff to give a board full of squirrels or soldiers. This also counts for decks like Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief, that make a lot of copies of stuff, as well as for a Selesnya build of Templar Knights, or Simic Persistent Petitioners if you're trying to get really weird and spicy and niche with it. Which I support, by the way. I'd actually, I'd actually love to see either of those builds. Let's mosey on over now to Malamet Brawler, one in a green creature cat warrior from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It says, whenever Malamet Brawler attacks, target attacking creature gains trample until end of turn, and it's a 2-2. Two, two. I'm sure this saw more limited play than commander play, but I still think this card smacks in go tall builds, such as my Vorel of the Hulkclade build or a Halana and Alina partners deck. Being able to repeatedly give our big beaters trample is a boon for us when we're trying to deal as much damage as possible with one or two creatures. This doesn't have any built-in evasion, but that can be mitigated with some equipment or auras that give this thing flying or unblockable or menace or shadow or 
Any other evasion abilities that I can't really think of right now? Also, it's another cat, so that's cool. But all right, that's enough of that. We're gonna move on to Sky Husser. Hussar? Husser? Hussar? Correct me in the comments. It's three and a white blue creature human knight. This one's from Dissension, which is from the original Ravnica block. It has flying, and when Sky Hussar comes into play, untap all creatures you control. It also has a cool ability called Forecast, which means you can tap two untapped white and or blue creatures you control. Reveal Sky Hussar from your hand, draw a card, play this ability only during your upkeep, and only once each turn, and it's a 4-3. Okay, so this is another card that has a lot going on, but we're gonna address it step by step, or rather, line by line. So, flying is just constantly good. I can't really think of a scenario where it's just straight up bad for us. Untapping all creatures we control, especially after a big swing, can make or break a game and potentially save us from a lethal crackback from our opponents. And lastly, yes, forecast is weird and narrow, but man, is it so easy to have two tokens that we can tap on our upkeep to draw an extra card? In that scenario, with this card in hand and two creatures on board, we can be snagging two cards at the beginning of our turn instead of one, and that's huge throughout the course of the game. The more of our deck we see, the higher our chances of getting ahead and winning are. All right, let's move on to Lethal Scheme. Two black, black instant. This copy is from the Fallout set. It says, Convoke. Your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one or one mana of that creature's color. It also says, Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Each creature that convoked Lethal Scheme connives, which means you draw a card, then discard a card. If you discarded a non-land card, put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature. Bro, are you joking me? This thing is smacking me up and down. This is definitely one of my favorite removal spells, period. We've talked before about wanting cards that have utility in that they do more than one thing for the cost of one spell. This card is perfect for that. Not only are we removing a creature or Planeswalker, underrated part of that card, by the way, but we are also conniving not once, but for each creature that convoked it, which is up to four different creatures, meaning four separate connive triggers. In other words, four drawn discards, this can get us more gas into our hand while also filling up our graveyard with stuff if we are doing that sort of thing, which I think you should be if you want this card to live up to its full potential. All right, moving on to Tamiyo's Completion. Three and a blue enchantment aura. This one's from Neon Dynasty Kamigawa. It has Flash. Enchant artifact, creature, or planeswalker. When Tamiyo's Completion enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Permanent. If it's an equipment, unattach it. Enchanted Permanent loses all abilities and doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Just an absolute classic removal spell here in blue. And much like the Scaly Gorgon from earlier, this thing ices something on the field. Except this time, we can hit an artifact or planeswalker in addition to a creature which is some tasty added utility and what i love about this card is that it has flash meaning we can play it the same way we would an unsummon this gives it an upside to cards like frogify where you have to wait and cast it at sorcery speed also the time before we knew all the stuff after mom was a scary time i remember freaking out that the phyrexians had gotten to our girl this feeling is further emphasized by some stellar artwork done by dominic mayer Speaking of stellar artwork, let's move on to Liberated Livestock. Five and a white creature cat bird ox from Wilds of Eldraine Commander. It says, when Liberated Livestock dies, create a 1-1 one, one white cat creature token with lifelink, a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying, and a 2-4 white ox creature token. For each of those tokens, you may put an aura card from your hand and or graveyard onto the battlefield attached to it, and it's a 4-6. In the spirit of awesome artwork, you know, I just, I had to include this cheeky card from Wilds of Eldraine, and the aura stuff is dope, don't get me wrong, but I'm very interested in recurring this and sacking it over and over again, maybe as part of an Orzhov build that includes our first card, Transmogrant's Crown. That way, not only are we snagging a bunch of tokens when this dies, but also getting some card draw. Three tokens for one creature is not to be slept on, folks. Also, we always got to feature cards with a big butt on the channel because as a fellow owner of a big butt, I feel a certain kinship for my people. Anyways, let's talk by force. X and a red sorcery from Amonkhet. It says destroy X target artifacts. 
simple and effective. With the arsenal of scary artifacts hitting battlefields these days, something broad that can get rid of most of them in one fell swoop might just be worth an include in one of your builds. At worst, it's a two mana destroy target artifact, which is still pretty good. And it's a pretty simple tech here, guys, I, but I love it. And X spells will always have a special place in my heart since I took apart my wart X spells deck this year. And that is that has hit me pretty hard. All right, now we're moving on to Oblation. Two and a white instant. This one is from Command. 2021 it says the owner of target non-land permanent shuffles it into their library then draws two cards i love cards that add a little mini game to the game we're already playing oblation belongs in that family along with chaos warp for its ability to get rid of something but also provide an opportunity for our opponent to get it right back which is kind of risky is this the best removal spell ever not by a long shot but is it interesting Certainly. And I actually would prefer to run interesting than strictly better. And folks, that's okay. Not everything is about winning and maximum efficiency. This is a game and games are supposed to be fun, right? So why not just make sure I'm running cards that will allow me and my friends to have a little bit more fun. After all, this spell still removes something just with a little with a, with a little spice. All right. And now we are at the last card of the day, Defiler of Faith. Three white white creature Phyrexian human from Dominaria United. It has vigilance. And as an additional cost to cast white permanent spells, you may pay two life. Those spells cost white less to cast if you paid life this way. This effect only reduces the amount of white mana you pay. Whenever you cast a white permanent spell, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token and it's a 5-5. Five, five. I love this entire cycle from Phyrexia All Will Be One. The white version we're showcasing here is an unsung one in my opinion. For every white permanent we cast, we're getting a soldier and we're getting cost reduction on top of that. And it's a five mana, five, five with vigilance to top all of that off. Such a solid selection here. And I think it could definitely have a home in quite a few mono white decks out there. And just like that, we're at the end of this week's video. I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope any of these 20 selections end up making it in some kind of brew of yours in the future. What are some of your favorite sub $1 cards? Did I miss anything? Let me know down in the comments what I should include in the next list. I'm always down there in the comments with you guys, so come on down and have a chat with me. And hey, listen, if you'd like to get extra entries in our monthly Discord giveaways, win prizes in our monthly deck building contests, and play spell table games with me and my podcast co-host Cress every month, check out our Patreon in the description below. We've got lots of awesome ways to support. And if you want to snag a Pyramid Designs playmat through our affiliate link, check that out in the description below. If you use our link, you get 30% off your purchase. That really helps the channel a lot. So go and check that out if you got the money. For those of you who may not have the funds but still want to be part of the community, though, you can always hop in our Discord completely for free and join our wonderful community of jank lovers. Another free way to support us is by liking this video and subscribing to the channel, following us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at the EDH Jank Center. All right, guys, I'm out, and I'll see you on the next video.